Deadly moments during mountaineering on Mount Manaslu. Mount Manaslu is famous for its perilous heights where climbers encounter a strong foe that requires skill, courage, and unflinching determination. But what about those moments and situations that climbers face where every decision could be the difference between life and death? So what are these moments that we've never heard of? And how do they end up facing their tragic days? And how many individuals were killed or injured as a result of the disaster? Join us as we dig into the secret story of one of the most deadly mountaineering incidents in recent memory. Are you prepared to take on this high-risk adventure? Well, stay tuned till the end. In 2012, a devastating avalanche occurred in Manaslu, resulting in the tragic deaths of 11 individuals. Despite its reputation as one of the safer 8,000-meter peaks, with 2,172 successful summits, Manaslu has witnessed a total of 88 fatalities, leading to a death rate of 1.49. This places it 7th out of the 8 8,000-meter peaks in Tibet and Nepal, according to data from the Himalayan database. Among these peaks, Cho Oyu has the lowest death rate at 0.59, while Annapurna has the highest at 5.56. The remaining five 8,000-meter peaks in Pakistan fall within the middle range of this statistic. Following the tragic incident in 2012 where 11 people lost their lives, many expedition operators have chosen to avoid Manaslu due to the risk of avalanches. The disaster was triggered by a large Serac release above Camp 3 at an altitude of 7,400 meters. This event caused a slab avalanche that directly hit Camp 3 and impacted Camp 2 with a powerful wind blast. The majority of the victims who were in their tents, with many sleeping at Camp 3, lost their lives around 4.45 a.m. on Sunday, September 23, 2012, Nepal time. The debris from the avalanche was scattered from an elevation of 7,400 meters down to 6,300 meters. Immediate rescue efforts were initiated with teams ascending from Camps 1 and 2. A B-3 high-altitude helicopter from Simric Air conducted a total of 18 flights on that day, evacuating 14 individuals. A total of 31 people were caught in the avalanche. Eight bodies were successfully recovered, while three individuals were listed as missing and presumed dead. As previously reported during the 2022 climbing season, the Nepal government granted 404 permits to foreign climbers. When considering the 1 to 1.2 support ratio, it's estimated that between 700 and 900 individuals are currently attempting to climb Manaslu. Given the heavy snowfall this season, the route to the true summit may pose even greater dangers. It appears that the rope fixing team chose to fix the route using the traverse instead of following the true ridge. The ridge itself is typically heavily and this decision may further increase the risks involved. Additionally, the route from below the ridge ascends directly to the summit after a short traverse. Unrelated to the avalanche, the other major tragedy was the death of American skier Hilary Nelson, age 49, of Telluride, Colorado. She and her partner Jim Morrison were skiing from the true summit of Manaslu when Nelson triggered a snow slide and fell to her death on the opposite side of the mountain that they had just climbed. Morrison provided a detailed account of the incident on his Instagram. Jim shared that there were no words to describe his love for Hillary Nelson, referring to her as his life partner, lover, best friend, and mountain partner. He expressed how she had been a constant source of light in his life. On September 26 at 10.42 a.m., Morrison and Nelson reached the true summit of Manaslu under challenging conditions. After transitioning from climbing to skiing in cold and windy weather, their plan was to ski around the corner and regroup with their Sherpa team. Morrison took the lead while Nelson followed, triggering a small avalanche in the process. She was swept off her feet and carried down a narrow snow slope on the south side of the mountain, opposite from the climbing route. The descent was over 5,000 feet. Despite his efforts to locate her, Morrison was unable to descend the face and find her alive. Over the next two days, Morrison conducted an aerial search for Nelson using a helicopter. Finally, with the assistance of an experienced pilot named Surindra and the organizing efforts of Nimstai, Morrison was able to land at 22,000 feet and search for her. With the aid of Mount Sherpa, he discovered her body at 10.30 a.m. Morrison later returned to Kathmandu, accompanied by Nelson's spirit. Morrison expressed indescribable loss and emphasized his focus on supporting Nelson's children and helping them move forward. He regarded Hillary Nelson as the most inspiring person in his life, and he believed that her energy would continue to guide their collective souls. He asked for prayers for Nelson's family and the broader community that extended across the planet. Morrison revealed his devastation over the loss of Nelson. 
Prior to the accident, Nelson had made a somewhat prescient post stating, I haven't felt as sure-footed on Monoslu as I have on past adventures into the thin atmosphere of the high Himalaya. These past weeks have tested my resilience in new ways. The constant monsoon with its incessant rain and humidity has made me hopelessly homesick. I'm challenged to find peace and inspiration from the mountain when it's been constantly shrouded in mist. Yesterday we ended our summit bid when we decided it was too dangerous to move from C3 to C4. Both Nelson and Morrison were highly experienced and well-trained extreme ski mountaineers. They were sponsored athletes of the North Face Ski Team. Nelson was appointed captain of the North Face Athlete Team in 2018, a distinction held by only one other athlete, Conrad Anker. Her skill and courage were renowned worldwide. Throughout her career, she accompanied numerous first ascents on over 40 expeditions to 16 different countries. She became the first female to link to 8,000 meter peaks, Everest and Lochi in a single 24 hour push. In the autumn of 2018, she returned to the 27,940 foot Loch to ski from the summit, successfully navigating one of the most coveted unskied lines in the world alongside her partner, Jim. Nelson grew up in Seattle and later found herself in Chamonix, France, where she honed her skills in ski mountaineering. In 2017, a mere 12 days after arriving in India, she and Morrison summited the 21,165-foot Papsura, becoming the first Americans to conquer the peak of evil. Her remarkable feat earned her the title of National Geographic Adventurer of the Year for 2018. The year continued to bring her success with ski descents on Denali's Kassin Ridge and the Mesner Kule. On September 26, 2022, at approximately 11.30 a.m., an avalanche struck between Camp 3 and Camp 4 on Mana Slough. This section of the mountain was primarily being used by Sherpas to transport supplies in preparation for the arrival of numerous commercial clients later in the week. Amidst the coverage of the incident, the passing of Anup Rai, a 34-year-old high-altitude support climber from Sanku Washaba, received less attention. Rai had been fulfilling his role as a support climber. In addition to Anup Rai's unfortunate demise, 12 other climbers sustained injuries in the avalanche. Fortunately, all injured climbers have been rescued. It was also reported that some climbers became stranded at Camp 4, lacking the necessary skills or equipment to descend without the aid of the fixed ropes, which had been buried by the avalanche. Press reports highlighted the successful rescue of several individuals, including Kenu Pemba and Furte Sherpa from the Solukumbu district, Sukman Tamang, Nima Sherpa, Neem Dorje Sherpa, and Dawa Sherpa from the Sanku Wasaba district, as well as Spirita Sherpa, Lakba Tamang, and Jit Badur Sherpa from Dolaka district. As our expedition on Mount Manaslu's treacherous slopes comes to a conclusion, we hope you are captivated by the passion and bravery demonstrated by these mountaineers. If you want more stories like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button and press the notification. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.